Hey, what's up, everybody? So, um, I've been looking at VTP version 3 because I got my butt kicked on a lab task today while I was studying. So I thought I'd look into a little bit, do some Wireshark captures, which I'll show you some of the captures. They're interesting going from version 1 to version 3. Um, so some exciting new features come in with VTP version 3. Things that I'm really excited about, number one, is multiple spanning tree synchronization, which is freaking cool. Um, if you've ever wanted to implement multiple spanning tree before, you know that the biggest problem, at least in iOS, if you want to implement multiple spanning tree, and you're going to have multiple instances, is that you have to go and touch every single device in your spanning tree domain to make sure that the MST configuration matches. Well, VTP version 3 solves that for you. It will sync your MST config amongst all of your VTP uh, devices, so long as they're not in transparent mode. Uh, another thing is you can use extended range VLANs, um, and you can synchronize those in your, in, I guess we'll call it your VTP domain, uh, which is really cool because you couldn't do that before. You were limited to um, standard VLANs. Now you can go into the extended range, which I believe is 1006 through 4094, can be advertised in your VTP updates. Um, and then the most important thing, uh, at least for a lot of people, is that. Um, you don't have to worry about VTP bombs anymore. So if you've worked with VTP in the past, like I have, um, you know the reason that everyone runs in VTP transparent, or at least most people run in VTP transparent, is because that if you plug in even a VTP client device into your working functional topology, but it has no VLANs or is missing a lot of VLANs, um, if its configuration revision is higher, then the current VTP server, it'll wipe out your VLAN database across all of your devices in your VLAN, um, or in your VTP domain, uh, and cause a lot of problems. This happened to me twice, like three months apart. Um, obviously, there's ways to mitigate that problem. You know, you can switch to VTP transparent and then switch back to VTP client, and that'll reset your configuration revision to zero. Uh, but, you know, in the heat of the moment, whenever you're having an issue with um, a segment of your network and you have to swap out uh, an access switch, that's like the last thing on your mind. <laughs> um, at least it was the last thing on my mind twice. So for a long time, I hated VTP and, and swore against it. But now we don't have to worry about VTP bombs anymore. Um, I'll type that on there. No VTP bombs. Why? Because unless you are configured as a VTP primary server, you can't send VTP updates. Even if you're just in VTP server mode, you can't send VTP updates unless you are a primary server. And then even better than that is when you try to promote yourself to being a primary server, a probe goes out in your VTP domain to see if there's any other primary servers. Fantastic. It's a beautiful, beautiful feature. Uh, it makes VTP a, a viable solution again, in my opinion. So, enough rambling. We'll configure it really quick. Um, I'll show off syncing your MST configs and um, how to promote a VTP server to being a primary server, uh, and then how to demote it when you're done, since that is the best practice. So the first thing you have to do is, obviously, all my switches right now are in configuration mode, but you have to be in global config for the first part of this setup. Uh, I, I stress that because there's actually some stuff you have to do in privilege mode, but we'll show that next. So we're going to say VTP version 3 in all of our devices. And then, again, since you're, unless you're a primary server, you cannot send updates. I'm just going to let everything run in server mode. So I'm going to say VTP mode server, and I'm going to do iOS help for the first time after this, just so you can see the options, and we'll talk about them a little bit. So you can be VTP, I'll oh, the configure domain, I apologize. Let's set our VTP domain first, we'll say domain, and we'll call it net nerd. See, I'm so excited, I'm jumping the gun, I'm skipping steps. Alright, so we put it in VTP version 3, we have our domain uh, it gives you a nice uh, little message saying old oh, version 2 VLAN config uh, files detected, read OK. Um, so you won't lose any VLANs and you don't destroy your v your VTP data, your VLAN database uh, by moving from version 2 to version 3. But the one thing it does do is it resets your configuration revision back to zero. Just 
something to think about. All right, so VTP mode server, if you iOS help here, we have a couple options. You can either be a VLAN server, which is the only thing we've ever used VTP before in the past, um, and you can be an MST server. This unknown, I guess it's for future expansion of the of VTP version 3? I don't know. It doesn't do anything right now. But uh, we're going to set the, both, all of our devices as um, VTP mode server for VLAN and for MST because we want to look at the MST sync. Um, and I'll actually show on Cat1 why it's important to specify. Let's paste all that back in. And then on Cat3, I'm going to take this out and I'll show you why you have to put uh, your devices, uh, you have to specify what mode. Um, you want your MST configuration sync to be in. Um, so by the default behavior, you show run include VTP. I guess you can't do that. But you show VTP status. How about that? Um, you see that we're in version 3. Default behavior again, we are in server for the VLAN feature. But for our MST feature, default configuration has put us in transparent. So if you're looking to use the ability to sync your MST configs, um, you do have to specify either to be in client mode or server mode. I've again chosen to go with server mode here. You do however you feel is most appropriate. But I think server is fine. So the first thing you'll notice if this is your first time messing around with VTP is, and again we'll do show VTP status, you can see that we're in server mode for VLAN, right? So the first thing that you'll notice if you're messing with VTP version 3 is now that we're in server mode, you might want to create some VLAN. Maybe you want to leverage that new feature of extended VLANs in VTP. So we'll set up our 1200 through 1206, right? Oh, correct my little typo there. And it's going to give you an error message saying, hey, you're not a primary server, so you can't create any VLANs, you can't modify the VLAN database. So <clears throat> this is where, in my opinion, it's a little bit different. Um, maybe even odd would be a good word for it. If you wanted to promote yourself to being a primary server for either the VLAN or MST features, you actually do this from privilege mode. So we're going to say VTP primary, you can iOS help here. Uh, you can just press return. The default behavior if you just type VTP primary is to make you a primary server for VLANs. Um, but I'll specify it here. So we'll say we'll be primary server for VLAN. And does a quick probe out on the network to see if there's any other conflicting primary servers. We'll just give that a moment. It'll come back and ask us to confirm. We confirm. Now if you do a show VTP status, you can see, hey, we're a primary server for VLANs. And then there's an update that goes out, nice little console message saying that there's a VTP server for the VLAN feature, and here's the MAC address of said server. All right, so now we can create our VLANs. We'll jump on here. We'll say VLANs 1200 through 1206. Again, if we just, uh, well, not again, but if we do a quick show VLAN brief on cat 4, you can see we have nothing but the default VLANs. So we'll create those VLANs. Arrow up real quick, and hey, there they are. VLANs from the extended range. Pretty cool. Um, and then the other feature that I really like is that MST sync. So Let's put everything into spinning tree mode MST. Not that that's required for you to sync MST configurations, but we're going to do it anyway. So, say spanning tree mode MST. Let's pop that in on all of our devices. And now I'm going to execute the privilege command of VTP primary. MST, same thing, it has to go out, probe the network, see if there's any primary servers for the MST feature before you can promote yourself. And when that's done, it'll ask us to confirm that we want to promote. Cool. We can do a show VTP status again. And now for feature MST, we are a primary server. So let's configure um, some MST parameters. We'll say spanning tree. MST config, we'll give it a name, call it NetNerd, and we'll say 
instance one, and let's map VLANs 100 through 106 to instance one, and instance two will map all of our extended VLANs 1200 through 1206, and we'll exit. And I obviously have a typo somewhere. Let's see what I typed wrong. Oh, there we go. I, just, I didn't catch the S from Spanning Tree. And I'm also going to create VLANs 100 through 106. They're not existing at this time. All right, cool. So we can do a show span MST config here. You can see that we have three instances counting the default instance. And then over here, we'll do show span MST config. And this is, again, if you look at the topology, Cat4 is on the other side of the network. And look, we have our three instances. They're all set up appropriately, the names there. Uh, and then, uh, and I know I'm going kind of fast. I apologize. The last thing is since we're running in primary server, best practice with Cisco is that when you're done making changes, to your VLAN database or your MST configuration that you demote your primary server back to being just a regular server or a secondary server, I think is the terminology they use. So we'll say VTP mode client for VLAN. Same for MST. And then we'll make it a server again. Helps if you're actually typing in the right spot. And this is the only way that I've, and I think this is the document way too, it seems kind of a strange way to demote the server. Uh, I was hoping, and I'll just show you really quick, I was hoping there'd be like a no VTP primary, but that doesn't exist. And as you can see, show VTP status, we are running as primary server right now. So switch it from, or switching it back to client, or switch it to client and back to server uh, demotes it from being primary. To show VTP status again, and then we're just back in regular server mode, meaning we can't create new VLANs, and we're locked out. Um, another feature that I won't jump into right now, at least not in great detail, is there's been enhancements to the VTP password. If we were in version 2 and, and version 1, if you had a VTP password set up, um, you could very easily get that password just by typing show VTP password from privilege and we show you what the password was. Um, not super secure. Um, here, you have a new option for VTP password. And I'll give it some silly password like Cisco123. Um, <laughs> type VLAN. VTP password Cisco123. You can specify this as a hidden password and it'll actually store it in NVRAM. And you get this nice hash output that is not legible. Um, we'll go ahead and pop this on our other devices. And I'll show you another brief thing on the VTP password that I think is pretty cool. So I'll just jump out of all that. So now that you can see that uh, there's a password configured, we're running as VTP server, but we're not a primary server. Let's say a new admin logs into Cat1, wants to create some VLANs, and maybe they don't have permission to do so. Um, they'd go VTP primary, apparently the new admin can't spell, for VLAN, and look, it prompts you for the password. How awesome is that? So then they actually have to know what the VTP password is in order to log in and make any uh, configuration changes. Well, in order to promote themselves to being a primary server, thereby being able to make uh, configuration changes to the VLAN database. So that's a really nice enhancement also. And I guess that's all I'm going to show you guys for right now. Um, I went through and I, I dug up some Wireshark, or did some Wireshark's on uh, VTP version 3 communication. Um, sadly, there's not a whole lot to them. I'll filter it really quick. Uh, you can see you get this news like a summary advertisement. This is an update package. This is after I cr configured um, a couple new VLANs earlier. So you get an update packet. You can't really see what the VLANs that are in the update packet is, what, what they are. Uh, I think that's kind of interesting. Um, whereas, you know, with VTP version 2, you can actually see what VLANs are being advertised. Or this is VTP version 1. But still, you can see what uh, VLANs I'm sending out 
to my VTP clients and it's not letting me click. There we go. My mouse is acting up on me now. Scroll down a little bit. See if I can actually find a VLAN that I can figure that's an update. It was in this packet, was that an update from an actual VLAN that I set up? There we go. So, this is a, a VTP update um, show VLANs I'm, not, I'm sending out to all of my inside my VTP domain. Um, but in version 3, that's totally gone. So, you don't actually get to see what VLANs are inside of the, the VLAN packet, the VLAN update packet. Um, and also when you're promoting, I was kind of hoping that you'd be able to see something specific to um, when that, that little probe out to see if there's any primary servers in the network. But unfortunately, this is really all you get. You get a hex code showing um, that it's running version 3 and then code unknown zero, uh, x05. So I'll have to do a little more homework on that. I am running the latest version of Wireshark, but I guess it's not well-defined information yet. Um, and that's it. So VTP version 3. VTP is a viable solution now for not only syncing your VLAN database, but now syncing MST configs, which is kind of awesome. Also, you can configure private VLANs when you're running as a VTP server now. That's something totally new. Uh, unfortunately, at least in this version of code, it doesn't sync what roles the, the private VLANs are in, but you can configure them at least. So you can set up and do all your mappings, but those mappings aren't synced between devices. Um, other than that, uh, I hope uh, this was at least somewhat informational and maybe we can all start using VTP now instead of cussing every time that we see it configured.